welcome. Please join in singing our opening hymn on Eagle's Wings. Wisdom. The souls of the 
but just in the hand of God. And no torment shall touch him. He seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead. And their passing away was brought in affliction. And their going forth from us utter destruction. They are at peace. For if before men, indeed they are punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them. And as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart around as sparks from rubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. Word of the Lord. Oh, 
Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. But perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage. But God proves his love for us. In that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by the blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son. How much more, once reconciled, Will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received reconciliation. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. All reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the world. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we come together as Catholics, friend, 
has done. What is important at that time, as we step into the realm of that eternal God, is who we know and what have we done to prepare for that that, that happen. For there is a little dash between the years of our lives. You know, whatever they are, you look for Fran, the day of her birth and the day of her death. And what is important is that dash in between in the way that she conducted her life and in the way that she reflected her belief in being united with Christ crucified on her journey in life. For our sister, her journey was long and most was pretty good. Yes, it, I mean, except for maybe having to be with you for 58 years, you know, we all have our tendencies. <laughs> But when she found her mate, when she found her partner in life, she clung on to him and walked with him through a beautiful journey together. A journey that produced life as they entered into the mystery of being co-creators with God. A mystery that they cherish and celebrate a mystery that continued until the very end to thick and thin. And they kept their marriage promises to good times and bad, and sickness and reality. And loving and uh, those that were here at the castle literally walked to the threshold of the grave. That is as far as any of us can go with someone we love to the threshold of the grave. And that is where we need But because of the dash mark in her life, because of the beginning of her journey through and with Christ Jesus, she did not have to make that step into the grave alone. The children, her husband, brought her there. They did not go in. But she still did not go alone. For she was united to Christ, and Christ walked in that path with her. But unlike Jesus' own death, when he cried out and had asked, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where are you, Father? When he was in the total darkness, he had to submit his spirit, trusting with tremendous faith that his Father would be there in the midst of the darkness, but he had to go and do it alone. Fran had to trust as well <clears throat> as she stepped into that darkness. But again, now she was not alone, but the good shepherd was with her and leading her through the valley of darkness to now we pray into the glorious mansion, into the kingdom of heaven. As I was reading or proclaiming the gospel that was picked by the family for today, many times I've looked at this gospel. It's not the first time. Many times reflecting on the words. But I put them yeah. Beautifully, they painted a picture 
a close friend of God's. Someone who had a single-minded devotion that encompassed the love she had for her family and the single-mindedness of the love that she had for her God. I never saw her upset, so I don't know. Maybe I can talk with the family and see if there's any hints of that anywhere. But a new person, one who loves and cares for those who are around her. But the good that comes out of our faith filled journey. Our saying yes to God through our entire life here on earth prepares for us to make that most important yes when Jesus comes for us and asks that we want to go home. Your sister, your wife, your friend of Christ, send yes to the Lord. Was admitted into paradise. But just in case there's still any unfinished business, unfinished planning, I, I doubt that, as, as Dick was sharing with me uh, how well she planned out all the journey, how well she marked out everywhere she wanted to go and visit, and anything that was a, you know, the slightest significance she wanted to pass through and see. Something tells me she had the eternity already planned that way, and she was all set to do it just in case. We continue to offer our love. For it, by the offering of our love, particularly through the holy sacrifice of the Mass and through our individual prayers and penances, that our love helps to transform her even now to become who Christ has called her to be. Let us remember her always in our prayers. And let us do so. Yes, there's still going to be sadness in our heart. There's still going to be sorrow in our heart. There's going to be pain in our heart because of her not physically being here. No matter how strong our faith is, in the new life that we hope and pray she is experiencing, there is still sadness in part. There is still pain when we lose someone from the face of the earth. And it's all right. We've got the permission from the Son of God to mourn when we come in contact or remember someone we love. For the shortest verse in Scripture is when Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus and is recorded the shortest verse and he went. I don't know about you, but for me, he is the Son of God, the conqueror of sin and death, wept because of the love of death of someone he was about to rise from the grave. I think it's all right for us to have those same feelings, but as our brother Paul tells us in his word, let us not be like the rest who have no hope. We knowing that one day our sorrow will be turned to joy. Every tear will be wiped away from our eye, and there will no longer be any death, but only life in Christ Jesus. But friends, be careful not to think that that comes automatically, that there's nothing else waiting for us once our bodies are cleaned by the grave. There are two places waiting for us. Well, waiting at the end of the journey. 
And we make the choice now where we want to be for eternity, either with God or away from God. How do we get to be with God for eternity? We follow the example. Using opportunities to love, using opportunities to bring people together, using opportunities to extend forgiveness and mercy. Using every moment as a way of expressing our belief in the promises of Christ. For that, my friends, will bring us to the fullness of life, the real purpose of our being here on earth, and that is to spend eternity with all the saints in the kingdom of heaven. I pray each of us have made that decision already that we've already calculated our GPSs or whatever devices we use to map our way through this world, putting at our final destiny to be united with God forever, and then being certain that every step along the way reflects that belief as we glorify God in our life, and then one day to be safely home forever. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we now join our prayers to him. In baptism, friend, receive the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our sister Fran was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear me. Good and gracious God, hear all the prayers of our hearts. Admit our sister now into paradise, and help us to comfort one another with the assurance of our faith. In your Son Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, for He is Lord, ever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant friend, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any hidden fault have affected her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has gone, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ending, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without an end we acclaim.
the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for them for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. The mystery of the Oh, boy. 
the sins of the world. Let us fall to the suffering of God. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy of you to then under my doom, but only say the word, and my soul shall be The Eucharist is the true and real presence of our Savior Jesus Christ. It is also the ultimate sign of unity that we hold in the Roman Catholic Church. And so I respect them by the way, those who are Catholic in union with the Pope of Rome to share in this community.
enough humility, much humility that I'm up here. I represent our faithful navigator, Mike Hibbs, of our uh, assembly of 2655. Lady Fran was a part of my church family, and uh, I'm going to miss her desperately. She also was an active member in just everything that Knights of Columbus did. And so, Dick, this is a resolution of condolence in memory of Lady Frances Fran Clinton. Whereas it has pleased Almighty God in His infinite wisdom to call her from our midst, our beloved Lady Frances Clinton, who departed from this life on July the 12th, 2020. And whereas by her death our assembly has sustained the loss of an exemplary Catholic woman and worthy lady, therefore it be resolved that while we bow in submission to the will of our Heavenly Father, we mourn the loss of our sister who has been taken from us. And be it further resolved this testimony of condolences we offer to the family of our departed Lady Frances Clinton is an expression of our heartfelt